Hey everybody, I'm just going to give you time to tune in, but I just wanted to welcome you. So sorry about the technical difficulties that we've been having um, over the, uh, the broadcast. But hey, we're, God's still worthy. We still want to worship Him, right? So the sound's coming in a little bit raw, but hey, hey, let's, let, that's what God loves. Raw worship from the heart. Are you ready to worship God where you are? Let us know in the comments where you're watching this from. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and uh, how we can stand with you, how we can pray for you as we uh, worship God together. But Lord, I'm praying for everybody who's watching this from wherever they're watching this, God, that you would be glorified in their lives, that as you are high and lifted up, Lord God, all other false gods and false spirits have to subside, have to leave. And so, God, we thank you for your presence in every home today as we are the church, Lord God, wherever we are connecting in Jesus' name. uncertain that we can rely on the certainty of a God who knows the end from the beginning. In Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're so glad you could join us here today. Um, just wanted to say, say hi to everybody who's watching this from wherever you're watching it around the world. Please, again, let us know where you're watching this from. So shout out to all my people here in uh, Central Brisbane. Also those who are in Logan. Shout out to my Logan people, Gold Coast, uh, Morton Bay, Sunshine Coast, Everybody here in Brisbane and all over the world, we're so glad you could join us as we worship the Lord today. Well, just to start us off here, and I wanted to just issue this question, um, just to enter into our conversation, because now, you know, like it's looking like, at least here in Australia, it's looking like many of us are having to uh, uh, gather in, in homes like this home that we're in, my home, um, because we can't gather together in, in, in confined spaces, at least en masse. And so, Imagine that, you know, this, this is all over, and imagine that you have a late night talk show, a late night talk show, like Jimmy Fallon or uh, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, you have your own show. The question is, who would be the first guest that you would want to invite, and why would you want to invite that guest? So, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, I'm just going to get this on the screen and uh, give you a few minutes just to answer that question. You can go ahead. To that
Hey everybody. Hey, man, we've had crazy technical difficulties, but God is still on the throne. Isn't it times like this that, you know, we, we acknowledge that, um, you know, where, where God is present, even when things go uncertain. Um, I was just reminded last week at this time here in Brisbane, it was, it was crazy that, uh, you know, we were meeting. If you watch the clip um, from last week's service, it actually starts with me jokingly saying, this is the last time we're gonna meet in this building. I don't think it was gonna be the last time we're gonna meet, at least for a little while. Um, but here we are, and um, over the last few days, we've moved from a, at a place from, um, you know, having a whole bunch of um, people in a room, and then uh, an announcement was made that um, we would have to shrink down into um, like a smaller um, group, and so we were planning for that, we were planning to get life groups together, and now we're at the stage now where we have to be at least uh, four square meters apart from each other. So we figured, you know what, it's best to encourage people to worship at home uh, from their um, from their homes, from the comfort of their homes. And so we're glad you could join us here this morning, and we want you to stay connected. Um, I got some comments here from uh, some of you who are tuned in. Uh, Jay and Jerry, shout out to you guys out there in Logan. Uh, you said that if, if you had your uh, if you had your um, uh, TV show, you would uh, put Barack Obama, <laughs> Barack Obama as as your first guest. Uh, that, that's cool. <laughs> Larger Brinkman, uh, it would be hard to find them. But Larger, you said that you would want um, the person who started the virus. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Sam Thomas's grandma. Hi, grandma. Uh, answered the question that she'd love the Lord to be uh, her first guest on her uh, talk show. So anyway, just wanted to welcome you. We're in the, um, at the tail end now of our um, series called uh, DNA. And so uh, we've been talking about the DNA of our church, who we are as a church here at Every Nation Brisbane. And so I wanted to you know, just, just take some time firstly just to acknowledge all of you and to shout out all of my Every Nation Brisbane people who've been so flexible in terms of just following all of the um, transitions that the government has issued and which has been for our wisdom, I mean, I mean wisdom for us to, to be, maintain health and safety. So, you know, as you've been faithful to ride out all the different transitions to this point and you're tuned in online, guys, I really want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please do share this feed because I really feel like this um, this message that I have for us today um, will be of an encouragement to, to as many as we can um, encourage today through the Word of God. So anyway, let's um, look at the Word of God today. Um, the Word of God today is found in Philippians chapter 4, a very uh, popular passage. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. It says, uh, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Uh, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Uh, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and by, uh, by and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, uh, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the length you have revived and you, uh, you have revived your concern for me. You will indeed, uh, you, will, you were indeed concerned for me but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of great uh, of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation that I am to be in, to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In every, uh, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's take a time, uh, our time right now to pray. God, we thank you that you give us strength for every brand new day, including this one, God. And so as we find ourselves in a place of uncertainty, as we find ourselves in a place where we're just really trying to figure out life um, out of a place of normalcy and that this may be our 
our normalcy, at least in terms of circumstances that we're facing. We, we recognize you as Lord of every storm that we might face. And so, God, we acknowledge your presence in every home that's watching this, Lord God. I just really want to encourage everybody um, to press into God as you press in towards them, that this would be a time, Lord, that we would encounter you in even more depth. So we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, many of you are familiar with this passage, right, um, from Philippians 4, verse 13. You see it on uh, athletes' uh, shoes, like uh, these are the shoes of uh, Steph Curry that you see on this picture here. Uh, this, is, uh, this has the quote, I can do all things uh, on the shoe. Um, the Fijian rugby team at Philippians 4, 13 on their, uh, on their wristbands uh, because there's a knowledge of this verse, but often it gets taken out of context. And we'll look at the context of which this passage is written in just a moment. But the title of my message today and my encouragement uh, for all of us is as we are the church. Remember what I said last week, and we'll get to it in a bit. We're called to be the church, right? The church, we're a non-anxious presence in an anxious world. Let me say that again. The church, you, followers of Christ, are called to be a non-anxious presence in an anxious world. So when it was a little bit easier, when we congregated together and brought, you know, we were able to, to embrace one another and get together in prayer with one another uh, in proximity, it was a lot easier to do that. But now we are, we are forced to find creative ways, much like the early church. You see, the context of which these passages in the New Testament are written are under extreme circumstances of where there was persecution. And so now they, they were forced to be separated. They were forced to places where they had to allow for the, the, the Spirit of God to thrive in their gatherings. And this is why we must understand the mantra here. We don't go to church necessarily, but we're called to be the church. We're called to be the church. You right there, you're in church because you're a part, not in a location, but you're a part of the body of Christ. And though we may be separated by the, the intrawebs, by the internet waves, um, we are together in relationship. And one of the things we need to understand in times like this is that social distancing does not equate to relational distancing. That I, even more so, am your friend. And for those of you who are part of Every Nation Brisbane, I'm your pastor. Um, in times like this, it's, it's my joy to serve you in this manner where we can continue to uh, equip you, continue in our efforts to make sure that you grow stronger in the Lord and the power of His might. So thinking about the circumstances we're in right now, the, this is not necessarily persecution, but what we're facing right now is, is, is definitely this virus which is permeated throughout the world. And I was reminded of a book that I, I recently read, and this is by a guy named uh, Edwin Friedman, and he came up with this cycle, this, this vicious cycle, and uh, it's, um, it's a cycle that explains the, the circle of extreme anxiety and fear and I know many of us within um, your uh, your spheres may have had conversations and you're surrounded by people that that um, may be facing anxiety and fear but I really wanted to encourage you uh, this morning that God has not given us a spirit of fear but he's given us a spirit of power love and a sound mind he's called us to be a non-anxious presence in the presence of the storm that's around us so let's look at this cycle. I don't know if you can see it on the screen here, uh, but we have, firstly, the first part of this cycle is what we call reactivity. Reactivity. Reactivity is merely that we react to circumstances. Like circumstances come and we think, oh, the sky is falling, it's bad news. And so uh, he explains it this way, that reactivity is the vicious cycle of intense reactions of each member to events and to one another. And so you hear uh, what we call like fake news or we hear news that, that evokes fear. And so there's a reactionary response which leads to what we call the hoarding or, or the hoarding, the herding instinct, the herding instinct. And so the herding instinct basically is like the mob mentality. So you gather around people who have a similar sort of um, outlook upon being re reactionary, right? And so as you gather, in the, and, and it may not necessarily be full-on gatherings, but you gather in places where they gather online, whether it's uh, uh, websites that provoke, uh, provoke fear through the news that they present, um, or gossip sites, oh, there's a reactionary mom mentality that happens. And so this is the second part of the circle. 
and we find other as we find others who are reactionary, we we we, we form somewhat of a, a tribe with the least common denominator uh, denominator of hope and faith as the marker of of, of that tribe that we walk in. Now, it, it kind of forms it in a, in an ugly way because usually these tribes. Uh, subjugate themselves from everybody else so it's like uh, you're against us if you're not for us you're against us because of the reaction it pulls them away and reactionary people ha have a general tendency to uh, focus on what they're against rather than what they're for and so you have this in society and then you have this this forming of a tribe and then thirdly um, aside from hurting when you when you see this process right through which the forces of togetherness triumph over the forces of individuality and move to adapt to the least mature members. So there's this aspect of go gossip. Did you hear about this? It's not necessarily gossip, but like a spreading of bad news, which uh, if you've ever played the game of whispers, right? And uh, you, you whisper one thing and then by the time it gets around, it blows up into something that's amazingly huge. Uh, in comparison to what was initiated and this is what happens in times like this there's a hurting uh, that, that happens and so uh, Friedman th thirdly goes on to call uh, call upon blame displacement and he describes it this way blame displacement is an emotional state in which family members force on for on forces that have victimized them rather than taking responsibility uh, for their own being and destiny so what happens is there's a there's a shift of blame, right? What can we take the blame for? We we have a tendency to over spiritualize. Oh, the devil did it, or or somebody else did it. When like there's there's a time that um, we we don't claim in, in this model of um, anxiety. There's we don't claim responsibility. We're looking to shift. Uh, maybe it's the government's fault, or maybe it's um, society's fault, or the, this group of people's fault. But we refuse to uh, embrace the parts of it. I'm not saying you know like because. Uh, Friedman does talk about how you know some of us become victims of circumstance and we can't help that but there are aspects of maybe of the situation that we invite ourselves into that where we refuse to take responsibility oh, it was definitely their fault it was definitely something else that happened because somebody else did something uh, but there are parts of it that God may be calling us to take responsibility for you know you might say oh the devil did it maybe maybe I'm lazy you know maybe I you know like oh the devil gave me this disease or or this this uh, particular medical condition or well, part of that might be because I don't exercise in a, a healthy lifestyle you know like so it's part parts of it might be spiritual but parts of it you know we need to take responsibility for and then the reaction to that becomes the fourth point which is a quick fix mentality and so Friedman hi highlights this that rather than going for a more long-term fix you know which is if you want to break a habit or if you want to rectify something that has ongoing consequence you need to switch and totally uh well we as christians know we need, we need to totally lean on the grace of god uh, in order to have something that is more eternal that switches uh, us from moving from a place of anxiety to a to a place of grace uh, friedman describes it this way uh, a low threshold for pain that constantly seeks symptom relief rather than fundamental change. So it becomes like a, a band-aid <laughs> on, on a massive wound that can't, can't be healed that way. You know, just try to keep it together. And maybe God may be calling you to rely, rely on Him, which means a complete lifestyle change in order that He may rectify what's going on in the deep inner workings of your soul. Then lastly, uh, he calls for um, a lack of well-differentiated leadership. There's a failure of nerve, and that's the title of the book if you want to research it. A failure of nerve that both stems from and contributes to the first four. So there's a lack of leadership, and it, they become somewhat of an echo chamber um, because there's no uh, foundation. And so there's this vertigo that we enter into and becomes cyclical, to the point where we just we just spin out of control. The lies spin out of control. The noise spins out of control. And before you know it, you're in the cycle of anxiety when God has called us to found our house upon the rock of who he is. Friedman's answer to this is that we become a non-anxious presence. In fact, uh, it, was, it was Mark Sayers from Melbourne who actually talks about us 
the church at this time being that non-anxious presence. I mean, the book was written in the 90s, I believe, or the 80s or 90s, but now Mark Sayers prophetically is calling us to be a non-anxious presence. And when I heard those three words again, I really, it really resonated with me that God has called us by the grace of God to be a non-anxious presence in our society in the way that we feed our souls, in the way that things overflow in our lives. Now let's go back to that scripture that we started with because you know I want to emphasize what happens in this scripture. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Now to rejoice means that you need to be joyful again. That's the re prefix, right? Re means to do again. So rejoice means to be joyful again. And again, I say, be joyful again. There's a heavy emphasis on this. And it's amazing because Paul wrote this from a prison. Probably not the most joyful place that you'd think of when, think of a place that brings joy, Disneyland. Maybe not prison, but like what he's, what he's talking about here is that as we rejoice in the Lord always, reliance on the joy, not necessarily happiness, but leaning on the joy of the Lord to be our strength in anxious times. Verse 5, let, out, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Okay? This is not a suggestion. Paul, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, authors this and he says, don't be anxious for anything. See, anxiety removes God off the throne of your heart, like that's possible. But he removes God off the throne of your heart and says, you know what? I got this. I got this, God. And what happens is that anxiety begins to enter your heart when society becomes shaken in moments like this you're you're built on your own foundation and that's when anxiety you fall into this this fear cycle and the lord commands you today don't be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer watch this supplication and with thanksgiving so there's prayer there's petition other versions say petition and with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god so you ask him, you, you pray, you enter with thanksgiving. Even thank him in advance for the things that God has shown you he's going to bring through. Like rely on him to speak to you. No, I am going to bring us out of the situation. Trust me. And the peace. I love this, guys. I want you to catch this. And the peace which surpasses all understanding. You're not going to get it, right? In a situation like this, I, I have friends in another part of the world who have suffered uh, loss that I wouldn't wish on anybody. And we were, I was talking with them and a bunch of our friends last night about the loss that they suffered. Uh, but you know what? It was just amazing the peace that shielded them despite the extreme loss that they, they, they experienced. And I'm here to tell you today that God wants to give you peace as long as you say, I'm not going to be anxious. I'm going to press into the presence of God through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving god wants to give you that peace it's simple it's simple it's not enough just to be transparent for the sake of transparency yes we want to be transparent but we want to be transparent towards the presence of god so that he'll give us the peace that passes all understanding that'll guard what both your heart your spirit and your mind okay if you're like uh, a lot of people in society right now, their minds are captivated by all the things that fill their minds with anxiety. I want to encourage you today. Check the ratio of the amount of news you watch versus the amount of good news from the scripture that you receive. Because there's a, there's a ratio between that and the peace that passes all understanding in your life versus the anxiety that you may experience. Finally, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble or honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Okay? The, the enemy wants to captivate your mind. But in, in Corinthians, it talks about that we can embrace the mind of Christ for the weapons of our warfare are made mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Like we can take every thought captive. Is your mind subjugated under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Is your mind under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Because if it isn't, you enter into the cycle. You enter into the cycle. Check this out. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Okay? So now you're thinking about these things. Not only do you think about these things, but you practice these things. You get them going in your life. If you're a parent watching this, you 
you create an atmosphere for the peace of the Lord and the exaltation of the Lord to take place in your house, that your children and, and your spouse don't need to experience that. And I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You are indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. How's your contentment? Are you content where you are? Well, who's nearly uh, going through this trial right now? Yes, we are all going through this trial. But look at Paul, writing this from prison, exhorting the church at Philippi. Some biblical scholars actually believe that he never actually met these people at Philippi. They sowed uh, financially into his ministry. They supported him in prayer. But he's thinking about others. I'm not going to say which nation, but I was really blessed uh, to have uh, somebody from a nation that is restricted, that is experiencing the worst kind of coronavirus spread in the world, to ask me in Australia how I'm doing. This is the sort of spirit that Paul carried, a resilience that went beyond his immediate situation to actually think about others. That's where uh, when you embrace the, the peace that passes all understanding, it's amazing how God begins to give you a heart for those who are outside of your sphere. And our, as our spheres become smaller and the distance becomes bigger socially, we need to ask, God, give me that peace that will go beyond my understanding towards others. Contentment is so important. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. And in every circumstances, and I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And that's where the scripture that's written on all of those Steph Curry shoes and Fijian uh, rugby team shirts and, and wristbands. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's not talking about like me being able to shoot a three or score a try or get that job I want. It's being in the most difficult times like Paul was at that moment to learn to rejoice always to learn not to be anxious for anything, but take it in prayer, to be operate in the peace that passes all understanding, to think upon these things that God is teaching us, to act and practice those things, and to be content in all that God is showing us. So let's look at the cycle again. Let's look at what Jesus shows us, because Jesus is the ultimate non-anxious presence. When I think about Gethsemane, embracing the fact that he was going to die for all of humankind, the shame of the whole world was put upon Jesus' shoulders. Hmm. His shame, uh, our shame was became his. And that night on Gethsemane, before, the, before he died, all of that pressure, and you want to think about anxiety, the Bible talks about him having such a depth of pressure that he sweated blood. That's actually a physical condition that when you ex experience extreme pressure, extreme stress, this is the sort of production that our, our bodies produce, right? This is what happens to us. But he says, if it is your cup, uh, if it is your will, Lord, remove this cup from me, but not my will be, but yours be done. He embraced what God showed him to embrace in order that he would uh, grant to us peace. He experienced utter rejection. He experienced utter physical pain. He experienced utter shame and loss of dignity in order that we would experience dignity, the removal of our shame, and even healing. For those of you battling sickness, I'm believing that as the Holy Spirit is there, God is wanting to bring healing. So this is what I have to present to you, my brothers and sisters who are watching this, and my Every Nation Brisbane family. Let us, in the midst of all this turmoil that we've experienced, even just in the last seven days, some of us in this, uh, on this live stream may be in uh, job positions that are shaky right now. Some of my, my church members are self-employed. I'm really believing that God will protect you during this time. Your provision is not your job. Your provision is the Lord. And God is going to provide for you. He will. He's, he's faithful. If you lean into His presence, God is going to take care of your heart, your health, your family, and your wallet. Best believe it. Let us be a non-anxious presence in this time that is filled with such turmoil. So the question I wanted to ask you today is do you find yourself in this vicious cycle or have you found uh, and have you found the non-anxious presence of Jesus granting you peace? Let me read that question for you one more time. Do you find yourself in this vicious cycle, the cycle that I was talking about? 
where you have experienced just the, 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 the vertigo of more anxiety? Or have you found the non-anxious presence of Jesus granting you peace? It's not just a one-time hit, guys. And I will pray for you. But I need you to fight where you are. I need you to fight to stay in the presence of God. If there's only one thing that God's called us to strive in, He's called us to strive towards His presence. There's going to be so many forces, um, not just in the coming days, but through our life, that draw us away from being centered on Jesus. So I want to invite you to enter into the non-anxious presence of God towards the peace that He offers us today. If you're with your family right now, I want you to discuss this question. Take a moment to pray. And uh, if, you, if you want prayer or if you would like to comment, just to bring encouragement, maybe there's a verse or a passage that you feel like uh, would encourage those who, who are viewing and, and watching this. Man, I, I really want to encourage you to uh, just write it in the comments and, and begin to pray for those who may be experiencing a lack of peace. Let's go to a time of discussion and meditation and prayer.
have the storm, this, this non-anxious presence of Jesus at the center.
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Yes. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us Forgiveness. 
us from all sin and acknowledge you that you are Lord from this point on. My life is yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love if you could drop us a, a line, even if you want to drop us a private message that you prayed that prayer, or you can drop us a line in the comments. Uh, we have a team that would love to pray for you, love to get you connected, because you can't do this on your own, especially in the times that we're living in right now. You need relationship, you need people to help you on your journey. You can't do this alone. And so I really want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, please do message us or put on the thread, just, just say, I prayed that prayer. Okay, just say, I prayed that prayer. I need your help. And we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you get connected. Or if you'd like deeper prayer, you can direct message us at Every Nation Brisbane on the on the um, clip there. But we're also wanting to pray for those who have been battling anxiety, battling fear. I know I've gotten messages throughout the week to say, you know what, Pastor Nelly, I'm really battling this fear and anxiety. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will take a hold of your heart and that you would learn on a daily basis. Remember what I've been saying over the last few weeks, especially my Every Nation Brisbane family, but encouraging you, like it's on us now to really press in. There's, there's one thing that the Lord encourages us, us to strive for. Everything else, He's paid it all, but for, for us to press in and strive towards our relationship, our intimacy with Him. The three ways we do that, like, like I've been telling my church here at Every Nation Brisbane, is we pursue Him in the declaration of His Word, studying His Word deeper, Pursue them in desperate prayer. This is not a time for religious, casual prayer. This is the time to go deep in prayer. And then we pursue them in musical worship, like worshiping. Uh, God doesn't really care that we can't sing or whether we can sing or not. God really just wants our hearts to, to, to declare um, Him uh, as Lord, however we might do that. And so I really want to encourage you. This is a time on a daily basis, guys, to if you want your life to be an anxiety-free zone, get in the word believe what he says about you and what he says he's going to do and who he says he is secondly just um, pray into that pray and declare his word and then thirdly just worshiping him worshiping him so i'm going to pray for you if that's what you're battling right now and uh if that if you'd like to receive prayer specifically for that uh just uh, just let us know on the comments we're, we're pray for you. I've got our intercessory team on the, the comments as well, and they're going to be praying with you as well. So let us know how we can pray for you, but I'm going to pray right now. God, I pray for those uh, who are watching this that may be battling anxiety, fear, uh, whatever they're facing, Lord God, the pressures of life, economic uncertainty, Lord, uh, even with regards to, do I have the virus? Don't I have the virus? Um, what's going to happen? Is this really the end? I just watched Contagion. <laughs> or I watched some movie that's just scaring me out. Uh, Lord, we, we just commit to operating in faith over fear, Lord God. It doesn't mean we dismiss the circumstances that we're in right now, but we recognize your truth over the facts, Lord, that you are a God who is a deliverer, that you are a God who is a healer, that you are the one who began the good work in us and will be faithful to complete it. So right now, I pray a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit and a peace that passes all understanding that we would embrace a non-anxious presence that can be found in your Holy Spirit in our homes right now and in our lives. God, remove anxiety right now. We just declare it's gone and you're on the throne. Have a seat, Lord. Take control of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that it wouldn't be just a visitation, but we'd learn to dwell, to abide, to remain in your presence. praying for you, continuing to pray for you. Again, please let us know in the comments how we can be praying for you. We're going to um, just have a few announcements um, just on things that have changed. Obviously, a lot has changed. A lot has changed over the last few weeks. Uh, uh, it's, it's been a crazy time. So a lot of our events have shifted. So I don't know whether we can. Can we do this, Mike? Okay, we'll give it a go. We're going to see if we can pull these announcements up on the screen here so you can see them. Uh, so check it out. Welcome to Every Nation Brisbane. We are a part of the Every Nation family of churches and ministries that exist to honor God. By establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. If you're watching us for the first time, we're glad you're here. 
please fill out the connect card link below to help us get to know you better. Here at Every Nation Brisbane, discipleship takes place most effectively in small groups, known as life groups. Life groups are open to anyone who would like to grow in their relationship with God. They are groups that meet all over Brisbane. If you aren't a part of a life group, we invite you to join one and jumpstart your walk with God. Please contact us via our website or social media outlets to get connected. Our very own life group materials can be downloaded from our app or website to help start meaningful discussions in your meetings. So go ahead and try them out. Please take note of the following upcoming events. We have the privilege to come together as a spiritual family to influence a shift in the atmosphere with our weekly prayer and worship night. See you every Wednesday at 6.30pm at 49 Gladstone Road, Highgate Hill. Or join the live stream on Facebook Live. In addition to Shift, we will be holding prayer and worship live stream sessions every Tuesday and Thursday from 9.30am to 10.30am. If you have a prayer request, let us know. We'd love to pray for you. Our Every Nation Campus Ministry will also be going online. We invite all uni students to get connected with Better Together on Facebook Live from Monday to Friday from 7am to 8am and 5pm to 6pm. This is a great time to continue to come together to receive prayer and experience community and encouragement. Please also join EMC at Learn to Lead, where everyone is invited to learn Christ-centered leadership skills. This will take place via Zoom call on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Keep an eye out for hashtag pop-ups on Facebook Live, where we will do impromptu prayer and worship and encouragement sessions throughout the week. For more information, please contact us via any of our social media outlets or website to stay updated with Every Nation Brisbane, your place to call home. Welcome to Every Nation Brisbane. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, everybody, it's, again, so glad you could join us here. Um, we've gotten a few prayer requests that I wanted to pray through at this time. Um, I wanted to pray specifically for um, Matisha. Teo, hopefully I'm saying that right. Matisha, please forgive me if that's not how I, I pray, um, how I pronounce your name. Uh, she's praying for healing as she's sick at home. Um, we want to pray for anybody else who's sick, so please do leave a, a comment if you're um, if you're sick at home. I also wanted to uh, pray for uh, my auntie Simoy, um, who's uh, who's not feeling well at home as well. Uh, my auntie Simoy has been battling sickness for a while and so you know I just want to stand with her in prayer uh, please do let us know um, as we're winding this up um, we're going to pray and then I'll give you just a, a few more moments to send in your prayer requests because I want to pray for you live here and uh, if there's any other things that you uh, need prayer for please do let us know I've got, a, I've got wonderful Edwina socially distancing but <laughs> over there uh, to to, to help me uh, make sure we collate all the prayer requests so please do uh, get them get them to us but I'll pray for these specific ones and anybody who's who's battling illness right now I want to pray for uh, I've been praying for my dear sister uh, Nicole Keith Nicole uh, we're praying for you uh, and just the certainty of your uh, decisions as you're um, battling the battling um, health and uh, so we're going to pray for you as well so Lord, I, I want to thank you, God, that you are a healer. It's in your nature. It's in your name. Uh, Jehovah Rophe, or Yahweh Rophe, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for just your healing upon uh, Matisha, Lord God. Your peace over her, Lord, as we've been talking about peace that passes all understanding as she draws near to you, Lord. I pray you draw near to her right now, Lord God, that she would sense the immense, um, overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit in that in her room right now she's watching this also lord god i pray uh for my dear uh, auntie simoy lord god and all the rest of my family out there in um uh, in forest lakes area lord god has you know she's been battling illness god I, I pray lord for your healing upon her that you'd strengthen her at this time and just enable her lord god to experience the presence of the holy spirit i pray lord for the reality of the presence of your holy spirit to be with um my, all my family out there, Lord God. Uh, so um, I pray for I pray for all my cousins, Lord, um, who are who are around her, Lord, taking care of her, and uh, Lord, just keep her healthy. I know I want to pray for those who are of that specific age group that you know can find themselves susceptible to uh, this virus, Lord God. Uh, this virus finds itself.
amongst the more mature of us, Lord God, and so uh, it finds itself thriving in that age bracket. And so, God, I just want to pray for those who may be watching this or who get to watch this that are experiencing, that may be experiencing uh, just a fear because they fall into those circumstances. Lord, I pray that as the church, this would be our finest hour in supporting those who are uh, considered the elderly or the more mature, uh, Lord God, in, in our midst. Lord, help us to know how to be activated to help them. And we just pray healing and strength. Lord God, for everybody who may be watching this uh, that's susceptible to the to the virus and whatever uh, is they're facing. Lord, I pray uh, for these situations right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Just to clarify um, some of these announcements that were made, um, <laughs> we'll just pull the slides up really quickly. Firstly, uh, we'll talk about the, the, the campus ministry. Like we've got all of these things that are happening throughout the week, and I just want to shout out Mark and Adele Dallet and the rest of the campus team from here in Brisbane. So we're going to be engaging online. They're going to be engaging with you online. Uh, more details at the uh, ENC Brisbane um, uh, Facebook, and they'll have more details there. So if you can um, just just get on there, and, and they'll give you more details. They've also got their their Learn to Lead uh, event that's happening as well. So there's a Zoom call, so if you want to grab the link, uh, you can grab it from there on Facebook as well. Uh, I wanted to comment on Shift because since we made the announcement, things have changed. Uh, we won't be meeting at Highgate Hill. I feel like a weatherman right now. So there's westerlies. <laughs> we, we won't be meeting at Highgate Hill uh, anymore because of the, the restrictions that have been uh, issued from the government. Uh, but we will be meeting online, so we will be live streaming Shift. Um, from, uh, from Facebook Live. So please do join us on Facebook Live from 6.30 to 8. Um, prayer team, I'm going to figure it out. We're going to figure out how to do this. I think it's going to be fun uh, doing a uh, shift from um, from our homes to to the to the internet. So Helen team, get ready. We're going we're gonna to do this. And then uh, there was one more announcement. I, uh, there's going to be times of live stream worship and prayer. It's not going to be 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. It's going to be 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. p.m. Because we want to make sure everybody's at home to watch it. Uh, there may be some of you might say, oh, you know what, that's a little late for me. I'm an early bird. That's okay. You can catch up with it in the morning um, and then leave your prayer requests there. Uh, we just wanted to make that available for people. We're going to be exploring different times that we can come online and, um, and encourage you throughout the week. And life groups are going to continue to happen. They just won't happen in person for the most part. Well, what life groups will do, well, they'll use online tools like Zoom and uh, Google Hangouts. So your life group leaders will get in touch with you as to how you will meet. So we'll continue to meet as life groups uh, in, that, in that social gathering setting from the internet. Amen. Amen. Do we have any other prayer requests coming through? Nothing else? All right. And I wanted to thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, thank you for, um, yeah, just locking in with all the um, technical difficulties that we've been facing. Um, you know, we will, we will get it sorted because we've only had like a couple of days to let this all out. I want to honor all of our team here, especially the man behind the camera, uh, Michael Coe, volunteer of the year. <laughs> He's not a volunteer, but like, give it up for Michael, everybody. If, if you love what Michael's done, despite all of this, man, put, throw him a wow, a wow icon. Uh, but he does this all for the Lord. And shout out to Alma as well, who I know is watching this, his, his wife. Uh, thank you for releasing your husband <laughs> uh, to, to join me uh, you know, as we're trying to figure this out. Uh, I promise you that in the coming days, we'll get this uh, sorted out. But hopefully you've been able to be blessed and sense the presence of the Lord. I also wanted to shout out all of our staff. I've got Edwina here, obviously my amazing wife, Tina, um, who's just been helping me. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to all my staff, Mark and Adele, Easter, uh, Henry, Joe, oh, man, close down like Benson. Thank you so much for just being flexible. We have an added beatitude in, in, our, um, in our staff. We, we say that blessed are the flexible for they will never be broken. And so thank you also, church family, for uh, being flexible with us. Uh, but we're going to close in prayer. I'd love to invite you to pray as we close. I know many life groups are going to continue the discussion and prayer as well. If you'd like to join them, you can just comment. I did want to say, um, 
Thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you so much for just opening up your airways. Thank you so much for continuing to give and sow into our ministry. There is a link uh, for you to continue to um, give your, your offering and your tithes um, that has all of the details uh, for our giving, our accounts and so forth. Thank you for continuing to worship God and your giving. Just really want to thank you for supporting us during this time. You know, I think it's the best way to worship God is to pray uh, uh, and to sow, continue to sow into the kingdom of God and just continue to, to worship and glorify him in our families. But let's pray. As we pray the Lord's Prayer together, you got that slide up? <laughs> let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in Brisbane, all over the world, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week ahead. We will see you. We'll see you out online throughout the week. Grace and peace.